I'm Terry Hemmert, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. It must be Shalom, and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could join us today. We have a great show for you today. We're going to first take you back to the kosher kitchens of chef extraordinaire Julie Steinberg. As you remember, Julie was with us recently and taught us how to bake challah. Today she has two wonderful uh, appetizer rep recipes to share with us. And so with no further ado, we're going to take you to the kosher kitchens of Chef Julie Steinberg. And once again, I am with Chef Extraordinaire Julie Steinberg. How are you, Julie? Yeah, I'm doing good. good. Julie is with us today. She's going to continue her segment on uh, Jewish cooking and some more using the Sabbath uh, meal as the... Um, Center of your, our attention, pad. center of the launching pad, center of our attention. She made some beautiful challahs for us last time. Today you're going to do some uh, appetizers. Yeah. And what is the first one we're going to do? The first one we're going to do is a, hot do a cocktail hot dog appetizer. Cocktail hot dog appetizer. Okay, Let's Chef see. Julie. Let's go to it. Okay. What I'm going to do is first, for the purposes of time, I did not... Um, I'm not going to bore you with boiling hot dogs, but what I have here is one package of the mini cocktail hot dogs. Okay, you can obviously increase this recipe as needed. So this is one package of already boiled and drained cocktail hot dogs. You buy them, they're already cooked, right? Or did you well, cook no, them? I need to, you need to boil, I mean they are cooked, but... Um, you boil them anyway. I boil them anyway. Could they be cooked in an oven also? Yeah. Ultimately, I put it in my oven to keep it warm mm -hmm. um, right before um, the Sabbath meal. So these are boiled and drained hot could you, dogs. Could you take one out and just show us the size of those? Sure. You know, they kind of vary in size. Yeah, I know they do. That's why. I'll show you those seem a little thing. bigger than many I've seen. Here's the the smallest one I see in here, and here's one of the larger ones. Uh -huh. And I've actually, I don't know, here, let me try to hold it. I guess it depends like on the butcher and who made them, of course. Right. right. Um, and really, they do come cooked. You know, I mean, you could pop them out of a package and eat it. I don't know who would really want to. No, I've never heard of somebody but, doing that. But, but I'm I sure. went ahead and pre-boiled these. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, at the end, I'll tell you a quick way to do this. I and mean, this is a really quick recipe. I'll, recipe. I'll show you a quicker way. It just doesn't turn out quite as good. Okay, so boil these, drain them, set them aside. What I'm going to start to do on a higher flame is take... I bought a 12 ounce jar of grape jelly. I use about two thirds of the jar, just plain grape jelly or jam, whatever it says. I use about two thirds. Grape, huh? Grape. Grape. And just um, as of recent, I'd say in the last year or year and a half, a lot of the major brands of um, jellies and jams have gone kosher, even yes, the grape. They have. Even the grape. Even the grape, which I was surprised. My husband and I were um, taking a little weekend, Labor Day weekend, in Door County, and we did a little shopping. We had a kitchenette, because we brought our own food, because we do keep kosher, and we saw one of the major brands of grape jelly in the, in the supermarket there, so we got it. So what you want to do is mix this until it's the, a lot of the bumps, a lot of the lumps and bumps of the jelly holes are out. You kind of want to just mix this. And again, it's a 12 ounce jar per one package of hot dogs, and I use about two thirds of the jar. You could use a whole jar, you're gonna, it's going to end up being very saucy. So I use, let's say, about 10 ounces. And here is an 8 ounce jar of plain, regular mustard. Nothing fancy, or anything like that, just plain mustard. Any of the major brands that because the kosher certification is just fine. You know, Julie, you're the chef, but I can't ever imagine eating grape jelly and mustard mixed together. I know, it sounds so <laughs> weird. This, this was actually my mom's recipe, and this was the biggest hit. We knew it was a big holiday when my mom made these, and basically there was never a hot dog left. I know it sounds weird. This is what it's going to look like. I don't know if you can kind of see this. It's kind of a murky brownish, yellowish color. It does not look pretty. You're going to keep this on a high flame 
till it boils and thickens and gets a little bit caramelized. Now, for the purpose of time, we're not going to really wait for that. Um, we'll give it another minute so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, it's starting, and I know you can't get a shot of this, it's starting to boil around the edge. You want it to get to a roaring boil at first. Then, and really keep stirring it, then you're going to reduce the heat to a softer boil and keep stirring it. When you see that it's becoming a more uniform, deep brown, um, you're going to go ahead and add your hot dogs. Just dump them right there. Just dump them right in. And you're going to mix this. I know the grape jelly and the mustard sounds You want to turn it toward us so we can see them in there? Sure. Oh, there and they this are. Is, here, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because we're not going to really mm -hmm. complete this. Can you see that, Doug? Yeah, sure can. Um, there, there won't be as many lumps as it cooks, and it will be a little thicker and a little more glazed and caramelized. But this is kind of what it looks like. And it, the, the, the sauce really cooks into the hot dog, and it's really a delicious flavor. It's a sweet and tangy kind of flavor. So this is one recipe, and I will show you the finished product as soon as um, we get through the next recipe. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way. Just rinse my hands. I'm sorry I'm turning my back to you. Okay, my next recipe is even more simple. Let me just go back to hot dogs. When would you serve sure. that? Let's say we already, we've talked about before on a past show, we talked about that you start out like the Sabbath meal, we start out with drinking the wine and the Kiddush, right. and we wash our hands and we cut the two challahs and we all have some bread. Um, right. What comes next? Next comes the hot dogs. Next comes the hot dogs. Next comes the hot dogs. Um, and as people are enjoying the bread and drinking their wine, we, um, I'm in the kitchen serving the hot dogs. I'm going to go ahead and show you my next, my next um, appetizer. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought here for a minute. Even more easy than the hot dogs are the ribs. Now I'm going to take when I buy a package of ribs, they come in. They come two. I don't quite know how to call this. This is like one, um, one rib shank, one just one sleeve. I, I really don't know what to call this. Um, one section of ribs. One package contains two rib sections. So one package contains this. Because for the purpose of the show, I made two packages. So I have four of these. I have, um, no, I made three packages. So here, are for the, um, just for the purpose of the show, to show a, a bigger amount, um, here's three rib sections. OK, go ahead and take this. Put it in, um, I've even used a tin foil aluminum pan, those throwaway pans. Take your garlic powder, sprinkle it liberally with garlic powder. I'm a garlic person, I love garlic. If you don't like garlic so much, you can use less. You don't even have to use garlic at all. I sprinkle it all around the sides, up and down, and I really make sure that it's nicely covered. I'll show you what it looks like. And it looks like a lot of garlic, but it really gives it a delicious flavor. Again, if you don't want to use garlic, you don't have to. And then what I do is I take about ten, about one cup of ketchup. Plain ketchup. Plain ketchup. Any of the major, most of the major brands does have a kosher certification and a cola. And cola like. Like a drink, cola? Is it a drink? I, oh my God. A can of cola. A can of cola. Okay. A two liter bottle. Okay. So this is a cup of ketchup and one and a half cups of cola. Again, I can't ever imagine having cola and ketchup together. As a matter of fact, my girlfriend uses a diet cola. I haven't used it. This is my girlfriend's recipe she gave this to me years ago, so I can't really take credit for this. Although I get rave reviews. And you just go ahead and you pour this cola into the ketchup. You mm, it good. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but I have to tell you, these are my most, for some of the regular guests that we have on Shabbos, these are my most requested um, appetizers. Mm. They really are. They are just delicious. And you just kind of mix this around. It doesn't have to be fully blended, but basically blended, so you don't have big lumps of ketchup floating in your cola. And you just go ahead and you pour this in. You want to cover your ribs. And this, without spilling it, this is what it'll look like. Ah, it's almost spilled. Okay? And that's it. You're going to bake this. You will bake covered 
for almost about three hours on a 325 degree oven. Do you, how do you serve those? And before you show us, just tell us, you know, here people see these big things that are going in, these long short ribs, uh, strands, uh, whatever you, uh, pieces, right. and when, do you cut them up in pieces when you serve them? Um, when they are cooked... Shish kebab them? No, you don't shish kebab them. When they are, I will say it in a very poetic way, as you'll see on a menu, when they are cooked to perfection, they just fall apart, and that's the way I like to serve them. Oh. And so... It's a mess. These are not low-calorie, fat-free appetizers. They're saucy. They're messy. They are delicious. Um, we don't do this too often. Um, so how I serve it is I just take a platter, and I will serve it on a platter. I'll serve it. Um, I'll take the ribs out with a big spoon, and then I just serve the sauce over it. And I do have a finished product to show you. I, I did want to mention the hot dogs. You want to keep on a low boil, um, stirring occasionally for about a half an hour to 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Now I also, um, as well as letting it boil for that length of time, right before the Sabbath, about a half hour before, I stick all my food in the oven. And then um, we have a timer on the oven, the timer goes off about an hour into the Sabbath, and I just pull the food out as I The food is pre-cooked, it's just staying warm in the oven. It's just staying warm in the oven, because um, we don't cook on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Here is the hot dog appetizer. And you can see it's gotten nice, it's gotten to a nice deep brown. And here is the rib appetizer. And you'll see the, the hot dogs have become nicely caramelized. I'm going to go ahead and put this here. I think it would be great if you could get like a flachic dish and, and sure. scoop them out. I'm would be the, for that. I'm sure you are. They, they smell unbelievably delicious. They are unbelievable. If you could smell yes. on camera, you know, on tape, these people right now would be very hungry. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to need a spoon. I'm sorry, this is not truly a child's kitchen, so everything oh, is kind of... It's kind Chef of Julie mad. Steinberg's kitchen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and first show you how to serve the ribs. Now, the ribs, these have been cooking for a while. As I see, this is just falling apart. It's just tender. It's soft. Um, some people like to... These are, This is obviously not for vegetarians. Some people like the bones. And I just kind of serve the ribs as you spoon it out. It's messy. It looks delicious. And it just kind of falls drink. apart, and I just kind of cut it into more or less individual pieces. And then I'll take my ladle, and I just spoon the sauce Marinated. over. Wow. And it is just fabulous. And your family will get a great meal out of this tonight. That's <laughs> right. This was my cooking. And that's one. And um, I think this is, should I go ahead and yeah, show sure, this Yeah, sure, please, okay. please. The, the hot dog okay. appetizer, now remind me again, in the hot dog appetizer, that was the one with the jelly and, and the, the mustard. mustard. That's right. And the gravy in the ribs was the um, cola. And the ketchup. And the ketchup. And this is, here, let me go ahead and grab this so you can get a really good view. Here's the ribs. Let me just stir this around a little bit. And here are the hot dogs. Now I know when my mother would serve these hot dogs, she'd put those fancy little uh, um, toothpicks, the little mm -hmm. fringes. Which kind of, but for a meal I don't do that. I serve it on individual plates. And here, let me move the fork here. Here is, again, the ribs with the cola and the ketchup. And here is the um, appetizer hot dogs, cocktail um, hot dogs, with the mustard and the grape jelly. Would you, would you ever serve these two at the same meal, or would you, these be separate appetizers for two different meals? I Usually, I've never served them at the same meal. Uh -huh. I haven't done it. Not that it couldn't be done. 
The truth is, if you serve enough ribs, it could it could be a meal in and of itself. Sure it could, sure it's it could. It's really filling. This is this is just fantastic, Julie. I want to thank you again for these wonderful recipes. Of course, again. We're flashing these recipes on the screen for you so that everyone will have a chance to uh, copy them down. Two great recipes. Thanks again, Chef Julie, for being with us. We look forward to the next time you're with us. Next, we're going to have some music for you. I want to take you back to uh, some friends of ours, Steve Arvey and Dan Bornstein. They were with us on a previous show, and they're back again to do another song for See, us. What song are you going to do for us? The late, great Jimmy Rogers, who just passed away. It's called It's All Right. All right. Here it is. It's All Right. You told me, baby, once upon a time, you said I'd be yours, now, darling, you be mine, baby, that's all right. once again. Now I'm going to invite back my dear friend Monica Jinx. She has with her another former guest of ours, Tim Vanna. If you'll remember, he has a CD out called Local Talent. He's from Des Plaines, Illinois. And I'm going to introduce to you once again now, Monica and Tim Vanna. Hi, we're here with Tim Vanna. And we're playing a song off of his CD, which is called Local Talent. It's the fifth song, it's called The Other Season, and it was inspired by this headline that he read about the uh, state of roads in Illinois. That's right. It is a song of great social significance. Uh, you know, as singer-songwriters, now we have to go out and preserve our rich heritage. And uh, in the process of doing that, we, uh, we feel a responsibility to bring up these types of subject matter to the, to the greater public. And uh, this is a song that requires audience participation, as do all songs of social significance. So Monica has graciously agreed the audience. to be our audience, and uh, we hope that it inspires you at home. Uh, in between every verse of this song, there will be a brief monologue, and at the end of that monologue, there will be a question, and the appropriate answer to that question will be, We, we are. are. Just two words, we are. Okay? Mm -hmm. Remember, in the state of Illinois, there are only two seasons, winter and the other season. In Illinois, where we grow the beans of soy, every licensed girl and boy knows the game we play. In the spring, when the robins 
start to sing All the laborers will bring Out the signs and here's what they say The roads, they soon will all be closed For we surfacing again and Monica's with us one more time we have with us uh, Tom Carey of the Tom Carey band he of course has a CD out called The Last Resort and uh, let's go and hear him once again <laughs> this is a song called Cayo Hueso it's the Spanish word for Key West Florida my favorite place in the whole wide world
sons of sailors, daughters of sand. joining us. We hope you'll be with us next time on Taped with Rabbi Doug. You can see us in Chicago on Chicago Access Cable, TCI, on Channel 19, on Monday nights at 8.30 p.m. and Tuesdays at 3.30 p.m. You can see us on TCI, which broadcasts from Skokie. You can see us on Channel 35 on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. and then again on Tuesdays at 11.30 a.m., and you can also see us on TCI, which broadcasts from Highland Park on Channel 2. And that is on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. and on Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Thanks for joining us. Shalom. See you next time on Taped with Rabbi Doug. It must be you.